more of a day oh, three. Man. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> we are in Harbor of Refuge right at the start of the Atlantic Ocean. All the boats in our armada are here. The ocean's that way. And today will be the most challenging day. It will be a 30, maybe a 36 hour day. Some good winds this morning. It's gonna be very strong winds tomorrow morning in the middle of the night. Um, so it's gonna be a work day. Winds were 10 to 15 from the southwest later in the day. Sometime between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. they would build to 25, swing around to northwest, and then flip to northeast all within an hour. We had a serious discussion over VHF that morning about holding tight in the harbor of refuge one more day, but conditions would be even worse on the Atlantic the day after. Ultimately, the group decided to press on and deal with whatever we encountered. Okay, Delmarva day three. Our first minutes in the Atlantic Ocean. Winds are starting very light. We hope they'll build, we know they'll build a lot in about 12 hours. Sails are up, light downwind sailing. So this is Ocean City. Okay, day three, Delmarva, the wind finally picked up. We are uh, probably six, seven miles offshore now. Uh, finally going south. Close hold. Stacy's down in the galley making um, dinner, and uh, Norm's at the cockpit at the moment. But here we are out in the Atlantic. The sun is getting lower in the sky. Uh, this will be our first time sailing at night. Much of the preparation for this trip was with this Atlantic Ocean night passage in mind. We have a dinghy on the deck and a ditch bag ready nearby. There is a jack line rigged and we all have registered EPIRB devices that will send the Coast Guard our location if they are activated. We reefed the main and adjusted the lighting on all the displays to prepare for darkness. Yeah, beef bourguignon. I don't know if you can see that. It does, can you see it? Nope, you can't see it. No. We do have a light that will burn your eyes out. Yeah. Here's one that won't burn your eyes out. Ooh. There it is. You Look at that. You want me to hold this? <laughs> Yay. Okay. Now we, got, now we just lost our night vision. We set up a rotating watch schedule that kept two people in the cockpit at all times. A little after three in the morning. The big winds came in at about 5 a.m. Stacy was asleep in the cabin and said it sounded like a freight train running into the boat. Initially, the wind was behind us from the northwest, but then abruptly shifted to behind us from the northeast, essentially creating a jibe. Norm perfectly anticipated every change and directed the management of the mainsail and boom. It was a fast downwind sail to the mouth of the Chesapeake as we surfed down waves at 10 knots. Coming to the mouth of the Chesapeake River. 
very rolly out here. Winds were gusting to 30, and the rollers were building as we reached the Kellum Bridge at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. I'll never forget the sound of the wind screaming through the rigging and the sickening motion of the boat as she was battered by waves that seemed to come from every direction. We had never been out in conditions like this before. I dropped the sails and started motoring when we were about two miles from the Cape Charles Marina. There was a call over VHF warning about a dense crab pot field ahead. Soon we were winding our way around pot after pot. I never saw the one we hit. It was lost in a big roller. I heard the thump though and turned to see it pop up behind the boat. The engine sputtered and died. When I tried to start it again, it vibrated horribly, making the whole boat shudder. I had heard of engines being destroyed after getting lines wrapped around the props shaft so I didn't try to start it again. We called Boat US to ask for a tow to Cape Charles, but they said conditions were too rough to send a boat out. We called the marina and they were able to get us in contact with a waterman who could give us a tow. Before confirming that arrangement though, the Coast Guard broke in on VHF to offer assistance. We accepted. I put a tiny bit of foresail out to keep the boat pointed forward and we drifted almost five miles from Cape Charles before the Coast Guard arrived. Do you remember the waterman's last name? Oh. It's just Thomas. Hi. We were so impressed by the professionalism of the young men and women on that vessel as they set about safely securing Blown Away and towing us straight to the travel lift for a haul out. The service techs did a thorough assessment but not, did not find any sign of damage to the powertrain or transmission. We got into our slip at about 3 p.m. and took much needed naps before heading into town for a meal at the only open restaurant during those COVID days. Oh,